Hello friends, in this video we will try to understand the concept of normalization in database. The normalization is the important concept in a database and we will start understanding what all problem arise if the table or database is not normalized and how normalization solve this problem. So what is normalization? It is the process of converting complex database structure into simple and more database structure. Normalization rule divides larger table into smaller tables and links them using relationship. So when tables are smaller, it is very easy to handle and perform the operation of it. The purpose of normalization in SQL in database is to eliminate the redundant data. What is redundant, repetitive or duplicate data and ensure that data is stored logically. So normalization in a database is a technique which reduces the data redundancy or data duplication. Suppose if uh, a table, any table is not properly normalized, the we have data redundancy, we have lots of data redundancy then it will not only eat up extra memory space or physical storage but will also make it difficult to handle and update the database. So there are two types of redundancies, a row level redundancy and a column level redundancy. Again, <coughs> it eliminates undesirable characteristics like insertion, update and deletion anomalies. So what is data redundancy? Why should we reduce it? The data redundancy is nothing but the repetition of the similar data at multiple places and we want to reduce it, we want to minimize it. Not just because a repetition of similar data multiple times uh, consume your data space. It also leads to multiple other issues like insertion, update and deletion anomalies. So insertion, updation and deletion anomalies are very frequent if database is not normalized and that's why normalization is very important. <coughs> so this entire information gets repeated and this is what is redundancy. Now this data redundancy not only increases the size of our, our database unnecessarily but also leads to these issues like insertion, update and deletion anomalies. So let's see what these issues are. So before that we will uh, we'll understand row level and column level redundancy. Suppose we have a database, so in a database there is a ID, name, age and if, if, if you look at this database you will find the two rows are exactly same here. So it may happen in your database the multiple rows are same at uh, different places. So there is a duplication of data and that must be minimized or reduced. So how can you reduce or minimize the row level redundancy? For that, there is a concept of primary key. Suppose what if you declare ID column as a primary key? So we know primary key is a unique key and which cannot be null. So after declaring ID as a primary key, you can reduce the you can completely eliminate the low uh, row level redundancy. So for uh, reducing or completely eliminating row level redundancy, we can use the concept of primary key in our database. The here in another table, as you can see, there is a column level redundancy. So if you observe this table, you will find there is no two or more rows are same, identical. 
but you can find out some columns are same exactly same these are the columns CID C name EID E name department and salary so these are the um, column level redundancy some columns are exactly same at multiple points at multiple places in the database if it's fine if a database is very small like a 10 entries 15 entries but actually practically database is very large it may be having a few thousands to few lakhs entries and in such a huge database suppose if we have redundant data like this it will be difficult it will be really difficult for the data administrator and it will lead to three problems as we discussed before so these are the insertion anomaly deletion anomaly and the updation anomaly the inventor of the relational model Eager code proposed the theory of normalization in that time in 1970s. The normalization of the data. And he introduced normal form and he continued to extend theory with second and third normal form. Later he joined with Raymond Boyce to develop theory of BCNF to reduce the normalization. So that's a complete thing. That's a complete other thing. We will focus on insertion anomaly, deletion anomaly, and updation anomaly. So we have a same thing. So insertion, deletion, and updation anomaly are the special occasion where it creates a problem for such operations. As I said those anomalies offers that special occasion it's not a normal operation suppose we will start with the insertion anomaly so now we have this data in our table suppose if we have to add one student then we can simply add it okay. we will add it SID, S name, age, CID, C name, EID. That's very easy. That's a normal situation and we can add very easily. But what if this is the database of our institute and that institute wants to add a new course? So, of course, let's see here. This is C4 course. The course name is Signal and this new course is added. But what is the other information present along with this course? Now the institute, institute is having only one this table which is maintaining their database. And suppose if they want to add one course over here, it will create a problem because other information is missing. What will what will we what will they enter in a SID column, which is the primary key? We know the primary key cannot be uh, null. So suppose suppose if the thing if they consider to insert some random values in SID, it will create a problem. It will create a problem later later stage of the database. So suppose now in this situation, the institute wants to insert a data where other data is absent. So this kind of information, this kind of operation is called as insertion anomalies. In other examples, suppose, suppose if you add one more student, six student with S name and age, and again that student has taken a DBMS course. So again, CID, C name, EID, E name, department and salary, all those columns will be repeated for that student so likewise you are increasing the redundancy in your database 
okay this should not happen our main focus is to reduce the redundancy not to increase the redundancy this is the insertion anomaly now we start a uh, deleting student information suppose if you want to delete a student uh let's say the the student if you want to delete a student uh, first we are selecting that student second which is having sid 2 and later we want to delete it but uh, if you if you notice let's assume that student is the only student for that course in that department and what if if you delete that student from your database you are again losing other information which was associated with that entry suppose if you remove geeta so geeta was registered for a java subject which was offered in it department suppose if you want to remove only a geeta from your database but along with this geeta and her information other information will be lost this should not happen okay this will lead to deletion anomaly now we will start with the updation anomaly or modification anomaly so let's say if the salary of faculty or employees increased let's say the faculty which is teaching dpms for that faculty i want to increase the salary again it will create a problem but suppose if we want to update the change of the name alina to alia it will not create a problem because SID is unique. It will point to only one information, one tuple in your relation. So it it won't be a problem. It will be easily updated. So that's a normal situation. But what if if I want to delete uh, update the salary from twenty thousand to thirty thousand? But again, here the problem is that there are number of columns which are a redundant which are duplicate in your database at multiple points at multiple places so in such cases you need to update that salary at multiple points so this should not happen again okay because there is a hell lot of work uh, which the administrator has to do to update every single record with the new salad even uh, during the modification during the updation single row is missed out it will lead to inconsistent data hence data redundancy can also leads to inconsistency in your database which is the result of the updation anomaly so if you want to change the salary it should be modified it should be updated at multiple places this should not be happen okay and then that's why it is known as the updation anomaly now you understand that data redundancy is a pure evil not only because it eats up extra space it consumes the data but it leads to problem in inserting new data deleting the data and huge problem if you want to update the data on your database if your database is huge so now the question is how normalization will solve this problem the solution the normalization will break the existing table student table you can see the table is having many columns so normalization will break the existing student table into uh, 
multiple tables. The normalization rule divides larger table into smaller tables and it links them using a relationship. That was the definition. So what if we create three different tables? Like student table, course table and employee table. The student table will save the data of student. Course table and employee table will save the data of the course and employee information. And now these three tables are linked together. So suppose if I want to increase the salary, update the salary of a specific faculty from 20,000 to 30,000. So only one change we need to do, which is in employee table. And since all the tables are logically connected with each other, there is no need to update each and every row for the students who are taking DBMS subject. So using normalization that insertion, updation and deletion works becomes very easy. So normalization is not about the eliminating the data redundancy. It, it's about minimizing data redundancy. So now earlier where all the salary information was getting repeated along with other information. Now every student record uh, will be having course name and a course ID and a faculty ID. The course uh, the student table is logically connected to other tables using CID and EID. Information because information is kept in a different table. And if we want to update any information, we just have to update it at a one place. It will automatically be updated when we paste the student record along with the course record and employee record using join operation. So now the redundancy is minimized. And uh, the problems which arise due to it are also minimized. Okay. So this is how we can reduce the, minimize the redundancy and uh, solve the problems of uh, insertion, deletion and updation anomaly. So now uh, we will learn about all the ordinary forms in our coming videos. So stay tuned and do subscribe this channel.